The makers of Camtasia have provided a bundle of YouTube assets, and they're making them available for free download. So I wanted to show you where you can go to get those and how you can customize them so that they match your branding. In the description, click the link to go to the download site. There, click the free download button. It opens another tab, and it shows you the five assets that you can download. Notice that you'll need to sign in before you can download those assets. So go ahead and sign in, and then you'll see two buttons whenever you hover over the image. You'll see a button to download directly to Camtasia or to download to your computer. I prefer just downloading the files directly to my computer. So hover your mouse over each one, click the download button, and save it in a folder. Then when all your files are downloaded, select those files and drag them into Camtasia. When you do, Camtasia will ask you if you want to add them to a new library or an existing library. I already have a YouTube library, so I decided to save in there. Since these are Nick Nimmin's assets, I'm going to create a Nick Nimmin folder. Then I'll select each of these items and drag them into that Nick Nimmin folder. Also with these selected, I'm gonna right click and add them to the timeline so I can see them all on the timeline. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see these in better detail. And then let's play through. We see the first item is an end group. So if we play through this, we see some rectangles appearing and then a place for a subscribe button and a couple of videos. So here are a couple of things that I would do to customize this for myself. When we select the end group item, we can see here in the first tab that we have smart properties in Camtasia 2021. Notice if I wanted to, I could select a theme like audio helper and then things turn to that yellowish brownish color that I have there. Or I could try my cam answers colors and then I have the yellow, blue and green or I could try the Camtasia core colors. And then I see a darker green, a lighter green, and a white. So if you have themes installed, you can choose those themes. Maybe you don't have themes installed, and instead you want to use your colors. So I can use the dropdown and choose the My Colors palette that's available. So let's say I want to use red for this color, and then I want an orange for this color, and I want a yellow for this side. And then for the text, we can change those colors and make sure those are darker as well. We might choose maybe this blue for the first text and perhaps purple for the second text. You can also change the fonts. They were originally Arial Black, but maybe you want to use a different font. Let's move on to the next item, and this is the info panel. So here, like we saw before, we have these rectangles that come in and then information that happens on the left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this blank track and drag it down to the bottom, and I'm going to put another video here so that we can see what's happening. So here, if I play through the video, you can see that I'm talking and then information comes up on the left. So what I should probably do is animate it so that I also move out of the way. Here you can see I'm getting cut off on the shoulder and there's all this extra room on the side. So I think it's going to be better if I add an animation. So let me zoom in on the timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'll do, I'll click on my video. I'll do a shift A to add an animation. I'm going to need to make it a lot shorter. I think their animation is closer to 10 frames. So I'm going to drag this down to about 10 frames. And then here at the end of the animation, I want to be centered in the space that's left. So what I'll do is if I try to move this, it moves the words behind. So I'm going to instead just lock this track and then I'm going to grab my track and move it over where I want. So there now I'm a little bit better centered. So it looks like the animation starts right at the beginning of that. So I'm just going to move this all the way to the beginning and I'm going to play through. Yeah, and it moves me over and it seems like it is pretty well aligned. So those angles come over and it looks like I move rather well with those. So I'm going to re-enable this track. I'm going to click it. I'm going to expand or open the group, open the info panel. And if I scroll up, I can see that's where the text is. I would stagger these. So I would have the first item come in first and then I would talk about it and then the second item and the third. Now these aren't in that exact order as we go through here. So what I would do is I would select the first one, make sure that it happens first. Then I would go to the second one and have it start just a little bit later, whenever that may be. And then I would find the third one and that's going to be up here and have that start even later than the second one. And then grab the fourth one, have it start after that, grab the fifth one, have it start later, and then grab the sixth one and have it start last. Then probably what I would do is reorder these. So I would grab this and bring it here and I would grab this track and bring it down and then this track and bring it down. So that way the first one is at the bottom, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And again, I would time these so that they match up with whatever I'm talking about. Now let's go back to the main timeline. One way to do that is just to click the main timeline tab here on the left. Another way that I might do this is you can see that we're in these different groups. And if I wanted to close a group, I can use control shift U to close the group. 
and then I can tap U again and again and again. And now I've closed all of those tabs and I'm left with just the main tab. So if you hold down Control and Shift and then tap U until all those tabs are gone, then you're back to the main timeline. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out so I can see the next element that's here. And I'll trim this way down so I can see everything in the project on one screen. The next thing we have is a lower third. It comes up with these three rectangles and then it presents your name. Again, I would color code these to match with my branding or my style. I'll also change this so that I'm back in the center again. There we go. And one thing I might change here is adding a second level of text. I'm thinking I might wanna have a name and a title or a name and a website or something like that appear here. So let's expand this. And when we do, we see the lower third text. So I'll expand that. And then I see the text box. And it's very simple to add that second row. I'm going to just expand this text box so it's taller in both areas. And then if I go in here, I can type something like name, enter, title. Now I'm not a fan of italic, so I might select this clip and just change it from bold italic to just bold. And then again, if we need to change the size, if we need it a little bit bigger, we could do that as well. So now if I go back to the main timeline and I play through this, I like that better. The last two items we would see, here's a subscribe button. You would just replace this image with your channel image. So I would expand this, expand again, open this group, and then I see where that image is. So we just wanna replace this image. What I'll do is I will find my folder that has some of my images in. This headshot is the one that I use. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it into Camtasia and just drop it here on the top. And then back in Camtasia, I can see where that image is. And now I'm gonna take it, grab it and drag it down to here. Now, when I do, if I rest over top, I can see it changes from a blue outline to a green outline. And when I do, I'm gonna do a replace from start. That way the timing lines up perfectly. I'm going to increase the size of this so it fills up the circle a little better. There we go, that looks much better. So now I'll use that Control Shift U a few times to close everything out, get back to the main timeline, and then let's look at this from the beginning. Great. For this last item, it's a transition. And if we look at it, there are red, white, and black rectangles. So again, what I would do is I would choose a theme and find something that works with your colors. And then as we step through here, I can use the comma key to go to the left or the period key to go to the right. And as I go through, I see it covers the entire screen and then it should show me another video behind it whenever this is done. So let me put another video at the end of this. I'll just end this video here while the screen is full and I'll grab another video and drag it in. So then as I step through this, I can see these rectangles appearing over top of my video. Then they pull down and reveal another video behind. So not a lot of customization there other than just the color of the rectangles. So there are some free helpful assets for you that you can download from TechSmith, the makers of Camtasia, and customize them to make them your own. If you have questions about these assets or anything within Camtasia, drop a comment below, let me know what your question is, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. I'm Ron from cammastery.com. Thanks for watching.